praise the Lord today because that should be the hope of every Christian of everyone that is striving to work for the Lord is that his spirit would truly fall fresh on us amen amen if you have your Bibles with you today we ask that you would go with us to Luke the 23rd chapter and we will read in your hearing verses 13 through 25. It's a little reading today. And 33. Amen. Amen. Luke 23. 13 through 25. And then verse 33. Giving all praise and all honor. To our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, respects to First Lady Archie and to each one that is here. We thank God for another opportunity and another chance to be able to stand and be an oracle for him. You know, we were talking about it in Sunday school this morning about how it's not important who gives the word, but as long as the word is being given, with this being women and, and Mission Sunday, we understand that in the future, we would like to see some women saying a word on Mission Sunday. Amen. Give, give pastor and brethren too, because on Mission Sunday, brotherhood is men's mission. Amen. So brother, pastor don't have to be the one doing all the speaking all the time. Amen. So now let us go to the word. It says here, starting at verse 13. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, saying unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I have examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, n uh, not yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. For of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried all out all at once, saying, Away with this man and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate therefore willing to release Jesus spake again to them, but they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil has he done? I have found no cause of death in him, and I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him for, uh, that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. Now, verse 33. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Amen. Thank you for standing and reading the word of the Lord. May the Lord have a blessing Add a blessing to the hearers, the readers, and the doers of his word. And for a few moments, we ask that you would pray with us and listen and think on this thought. Christ, our substitute. Christ, our substitute. And you know, when you look up the word substitute, it is defined as, defined as a person or thing that is acting or serving in the place of another. And you know there are many things. That, that there were in many places. Where people may. See substitutes. But one of the ones that we all know. And recognize is. Substitute teachers. Amen. I can think about being in elementary. And in high school. And going into class that morning. Thinking that we were going to. See our regular teacher. And there would be a new face in the class. There would be a new name on the chalkboard. And they would tell us that they were there 
to substitute for our regular teacher. Well, my brothers and my sisters, I say that to say this. In our scripture, we see that Jesus became the substitute for Barabbas, didn't he? The Bible tells us that Pilate was trying to let Jesus go. Because they saw, he saw that there are none of the things that the people were accusing Jesus of, Jesus had not done. He, he kept telling them, why do you want me to, to crucify this man? This man has done nothing. So I'm just going to chastise him and let him go. But they kept saying, no, we, we, we want you to crucify him. Give us Barabbas. Now, there's not much history that is known about Barabbas, but we realize that he was part of a group that did not agree with the Roman government. He is one that was known for just like the ones who stormed the Capitol. They, he was known as one who was an insurrectionist. He was known for sedition. He wanted to overthrow the Roman government. And not only was he in there for sedition, but he was also in there for robbery and for murder. So what this lets us know is that Jesus became the substitute for a murderer and a robber. But not only did he become the substitute for him, because the Bible lets us know that he became a substitute for all of us, didn't he? Right. For every sin that we have committed, yeah. Jesus became the substitute for us. Yeah. And what makes it so even so, so great is that the Pharisees and the mob, the, the, the Pharisees were out there, you know, pushing the mob to say, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And, and, and even though these wicked people were the ones that put him in that position, it was actually the hand of God that already had the purpose for him to be there. Do I have some witnesses? Because we know that it was already planned and foretold that one would come and die for the sins of humanity. Amen, amen, amen. But when we look at his death, not only was he a substitute in that, as at, uh, in that aspect, but there are a few other things that he was a substitute for. Now, first of all, he was a God-provided substitute. Amen? The Bible says, but God commanded his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, so what does that let us know? God provided a substitute for us why? Because he loved us. John 3.16 lets us know for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him would not perish, hallelujah, but have everlasting life. And, 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 and Jesus, he, he died for us, didn't he? He certainly did. And, and this death made, like I said, made the, 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 the Pharisees really thought, oh, yeah, we got him. We've, we've got him now. We, 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 we have the mob already. We, we have everybody on our side to kill him. But the Bible lets us know that the death of Christ was under the wrath, the divine wrath of God. So, so, so... He just let all those other situations just uh, come together to make it where Jesus could die for us. That's the way God uses people. He uses situations. He uses instances. He uses things in our life for his own purpose. Just like with Joseph. Like Joseph told his brothers. Well, what what y'all thought y'all were doing for my harm, God was already doing for my good. You, you, you know, uh, 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 even with Job, what, everything that Job went, do, went through, Job's situation was like that, and, and he still trusted in God, and because of it, he was given more. 
So see, in, in whatever aspect of life, and it doesn't matter what you're going through, if you are a, a, a member of the family of Christ, he already has that plan for you, doesn't he? The Bible says that he knows the plan that he has for our lives. So regardless of how many times we want to keep trying to take that path to the left, eventually when the fork come back to the road, we're going to have to take the plan that God has for us. Do I have some witnesses here today? Now, not only was he God's provided substitute, but he was the sin made substitute, wasn't he? The Bible tells us that he was made sin to die for us, doesn't it? He was made sin for us. So, so every little sin that we have committed, think about this, y'all. Every sin that we have committed and every sin that is going to be committed, Christ died for those sins, didn't he? He became those sins. Hallelujah for each and every one of us. But see, we as Christians, it's our job to strive to, strive to not continue to live in sin. Amen? We're not, as Christians, we shouldn't be living the same way people are living out there in the world. Because the Bible tells us that as Christians, every time we sin, it's like we are crucifying Christ again. Doesn't the Bible say that? Amen. So we as Christians should, should say, wait a minute. Our lives should be different. Our lives should be changed. We should not be doing the things that we used to do. We have said we have laid down that old man. So that old man should not be a part of our nature anymore. And we should strive to be better for Christ. And the Bible tells us, it makes it plain that he had no sin of his own. Right? It says he who knew no sin became sin for us. And died on the cross for us. Because he could not be a sin made substitute. For us, if he already had sin, there had to be someone without sin who be, could become the substitute for us. Do I have a witness? Also, he became the curse bearing substitute. If you look in the book of Galatians around the third chapter and, and, and looking at the, the 13th verse. It lets us know Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Right. So, so, so it lets us know that, 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 that he became cursed for us. Now we want you to look at two words for a minute and then we'll, we'll be done. We want you to look at two words for a minute. We want you to look at redeemed and we want you to look at curse. Those are the two words that are in that scripture. Am I right? Okay. Now, when we look at that word redeemed, there are three words in the Greek language that are used for the word redeemed. The first one is a grazo, which means that you have been bought in the slave market. And it is the word that is used when uh, uh, in First Corinthians that says you are bought with a price. Amen. Amen. We have been bought with a price. Right. We should be slaves to sin right now, shouldn't we? Right. We should be under the curse. But we have been saved. We have been redeemed. We have been bought with a price. And you might ask, what is this that was paid for our sins? Well, my brothers and my sisters, it was the precious blood of Jesus that was paid for our sins. So I'm here to let you know this morning on my way to heaven. It doesn't matter about whatever else people want to try to tell you can save you. Nothing else can save you but the precious blood of Jesus. It, 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 it doesn't matter about anything else. If you have not been washed in the blood of the Lamb, my brother and my sister, you have not been redeemed. Now, the next word, it says it is uh, ex agrazo, which means that you were in the slave market, but now you are ex, 
you have been taken out of the slave market. So that means that, 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 that Jesus, by his precious blood, made it that we may have been sinners. And we may have been slaves to sin, but we don't have to worry about that anymore. We don't, we don't, even, have to, we don't even have to worry uh, 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 about going to the slave market anymore. Because Christ has made it as though we have never sinned at all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And now the third one is Lutro. And that means that the price has been paid in full. Hallelujah. And the slave has been set free. So we as believers, my brothers and my sisters, have been set free. We can say just like Mary Mary said, take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. Why? Because I just want to praise him. Why do I want to praise him? Because instead of me being a slave to the, to the devil and a slave to sin, Christ has made it where the shackles have been taken off my hands. The shackles have been taken off my feet. Uh, and I am a free person. Uh, I am not under the, the, the sin, the, the cast of sin and the curse of sin and shame anymore. Uh, he has made and provided a way for each and every one of us. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Now, lastly, let's look at the word cursed. Galatians 10, if you look at it, it says, For as many as are of the works of the law uh, and are under the curse, for it is written, uh, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things uh, which are written in the book of the law to do them. But then verse 11 says, But that no man is justified by the law uh, in the sight of God, uh, it is evidence. For they, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, uh, but the man that does them uh, shall live in them. Uh, but Christ uh, has redeemed us uh, from the curse of the law. Isn't that a good thing? Uh, being made a curse for us. Uh, for it is written, cursed is everyone uh, that hangeth on the tree. Uh, so it lets us know uh, that we are cursed. Why? Uh, because we have broken the law. Uh, we have sinned uh, and done things that are wrong. Uh, it does not matter uh, how long you say uh, that you have lived for the Lord. Uh, the Bible lets us know uh, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So it doesn't matter how holy, holy you feel you are now. You have once been a sinner and we are all sinners. Hallelujah. That have been saved by grace. So we should be under the curse. But it lets us know that Christ, he became the curse for us. Uh, so that means uh, instead of us having to have all that done to us, uh, Christ took it all on himself. Uh, aren't you glad about it? Uh, Christ uh, took on sin. Uh, Christ uh, took on curse, uh, being cursed. Uh, Christ uh, took on everything uh, to redeem us uh, from the curse. Uh, and I, oh, I don't know about you. Uh, but I'm glad today that I don't have to live under the curse anymore because Jesus made a way. He provided the way for us to live and not have to be under the curse. Uh, there are so many out there uh, that are still living in sin, uh, that are living under the curse, uh, that have not been redeemed. Uh, but we need to let them know uh, that Jesus uh, hung, bled, and died. Uh, Jesus uh, 
open the door. He made a way that you don't have to be under the curse anymore. And it does not matter what sin you have done. It does not matter how long you've been sinning. Because Jesus is not a respecter of persons. As long as you give yourself to him. Say I believe Jesus that you are the son of God. I believe that you hung bled and died for my sake. But then you rose with all power in your hands. And right now you are at the right hand of the father being my defense attorney. And if you believe that the Bible says that you are saved. You have been let Christ come in and become the substitute for you. The song says I was living deep in sin far from the peaceful shore very deeply stained within seeking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry he became my substitute and now safe am I I don't know about you so let me ask you how many of you are safe today can I hear you say yes how many of you have been redeemed today if you don't mind let's wave your hand and say hallelujah because he is our substitute Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know when I was playing football, which I didn't do that much, but when I was playing football, I don't know if I wanted somebody to come in because I didn't get to play that much anyway. So when I did get to play, I didn't want a substitute coming in for me. But thank God that, that, that in my sins, Christ became my substitute. And all we have to do is open the door and let him in. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And all you have to do is open that door. You have to open the door. There's not a latch on the outside where he can open it. You have to open the door to your soul and to your spirit and let him in. He wants to be the substitute. He wants to be the one that, 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 that bore your sins. But you have to let him. Don't let the devil ride. Because if the devil rides, he's going to want to drive. And if he wants to drive, he's going to drive you to down the road of destruction. But all you have to do is hold on to the unchanging hand of God. Let Jesus be the substitute in your life. Now there may be one here today who is out of the ark of safety. who may want a closer walk with the Lord. But we invite you to come right now in the name of Jesus. We want you to surrender your soul and your heart to the Lord. Commit yourself to him. Confess your sins. Repent of those sins and believe on Jesus. As this song is rendered, the doors of the church are open. And if there's one here who is out of the ark of safety, we invite you to come. If there's one that may have end up watching this on YouTube, at this time we invite you to come to the Lord. Let him become your substitute. Let him be the one that is the maker, the creator, and the sustainer. Let him redeem you from being a slave of Satan. Just who I am, Lord have mercy, tell them that I am redeemed, oh yes, oh yes, I am redeemed. But we are
surprise Jesus has changed my whole life Oh, if anybody Amen. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer.